Oh my goodness, Whew, what a awful song that is. Anyways, uh, I picked it because it has the word battery in it and we needed the word battery because we're going to talk about batteries. Okay, so there are about, um, well there's a whole bunch of different kinds of batteries uh, out there. We're going to talk uh, principally about four of them. Um, we're going to talk about the car battery, the uh, dry cell battery, which is, you know, like AA, AAA batteries. We're going to talk about lithium ion batteries, and we're going to talk about fuel cell batteries. And we're going to talk about the uh, overall redox reaction that goes with each of these batteries, um, as well as uh, some of the details about how they're engineered. So, uh, without further ado, let's start with perhaps um, one of the most important batteries of all time, and that is the car battery. Okay, so here's a picture and a schematic of a car battery. As you can see in the schematic, car batteries are built off of lead anodes and lead oxide cathodes. So the lead's going to get oxidized and the lead oxide, the lead 4 oxide, is going to get reduced. Here's the chemistry for that battery. There we go, right there. Make it a wee bit bigger so you can hopefully see it. There we go. Okay, so you can see that we are starting with lead and lead oxide under acidic conditions, right? Um, battery acid is actually sulfuric acid, um, and it's pretty concentrated. I, I want to say it's somewhere in the vicinity of maybe about 6 molar, so you really don't want to mess with car, uh, car battery acid. It's a pretty caustic stuff. And you can see what ends up happening is uh, the lead 0 goes to lead 2, and the lead 4 also goes to lead 2. So both lead reagents are heading to the same oxidation state. Okay? Now, this, um, this reaction here, this overall redox reaction that I'm showing, it actually has a cell potential of about 2 volts. Now, do you know what the voltage of a car battery is? It turns out that a car battery is about 12 volts. So how do we get 12 volts out of 2 volts? Well, the schematic here is beginning to show it. What you do is you connect multiple galvanic cells in series so that the voltages add up. So you get 2 times 6 for 12 volts. Now, you can also see in this picture here, we have somebody, um, uh, looks like uh, a, a car battery has died, and we've got somebody who's uh, serving here as a good Samaritan that's doing a, a jump start. Now, um, maybe if we have time in class, what I'll do is I'll actually take you outside to my car, and I'll show you how to make all the connections to do uh, the jump start uh, of a dead car battery, because odds are at some point in your life, uh, you're going to be driving a car where the car battery dies, um, and uh, you're going to need to get a jump start. So uh, maybe we'll take a look at, at how we do that. All right, so there's the chemistry of a car battery. It's all bed based on lead. Sometimes uh, car batteries are called lead storage batteries for obvious reasons. And the chemistry behind this, the technology behind this, really hasn't changed in the last, you know, 75, 80 years since we've been driving around in cars with car batteries. Um, yeah, we do have um, different types of hybrid cars now, and I'm going to show you the battery that is used in hybrids. But, you know, in, in typical uh, cars with typical car batteries, this uh, chemistry hasn't changed all that much. So that's the lead storage battery. Let's get that stuff out of the way. Next battery, let's take a look at the batteries that we put in our remote controls and other sorts of um, uh, typical low-powered consumer electronics. And here's the chemistry, or one version of the chemistry, for a lead storage battery. There are broadly speaking, or sorry, not uh, dry cell battery. There are broadly speaking two types of dry cell batteries. There are the acidic dry cell batteries, and there are the um, there are the alkaline dry cell batteries. And we're talking about things like this battery here. I have here a, a, a triple A battery, and the schematic for a triple A or a double A or a D battery, it's all essentially the same thing. So. What I've shown here is the acidic version of dry cell batteries. These are much less common, but I thought I'd show you this chemistry. We also have the alkaline version of dry cell batteries, and you can look up the chemistry of that um, in the textbook. And uh, the chemistry between the two different types is very similar. 
it's all based off of manganese 4 that's getting um, exchanged into MN203 and you can um, see that that's going to be a reduction while we have zinc getting oxidized. Now this is pretty cleverly engineered. What they do is, you know that knobby part on the battery, right? Uh, maybe you can see it there, right? That tip there, that knobby part? That knobby part is actually part of the interior where we are getting the um, the reduction. So that interior part is actually the cathode and it's usually made out of something like graphite. Graphite does a pretty good job of conducting electricity. So that little knobby part there is connected to the cathode, the graphite rod. So that's where the reduction is going to occur. That's where the manganese is going to get reduced. And then the interior lining of the battery itself, okay, kind of the interior casing of the battery, is made out of, as you can see here, is made out of zinc. And so that's where our oxidation is going to occur. So by wrapping up the galvanic cell in a particular way, you can actually use the electrode materials to help design the casing itself, which is uh, pretty clever. Now, whether you're talking about the acidic or the alkaline or the basic version of dry cell batteries, you get about 1.5 volts either way, okay? And a, um, a uh, alkaline dry cell battery, essentially all it does is it swaps out this ammonium cation, which is a weak acid, for materials that will act as a base. That's really the only, the only difference, okay? And nowadays we tend to have more alkaline batteries than acidic batteries, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that maybe it's um, more effective cost-wise to make the alkaline batteries, and the corrosion of the battery itself might be a little bit slower under the basic conditions than the acidic conditions. That way the battery um, is gonna have a longer shelf life. All right, so that's dry cell batteries. Let's take a look at perhaps the most popular battery these days because it's in all of our consumer electronics, and that is the lithium ion battery. Now this is a different kind of technology, and, and here's an example of a lithium ion battery that I just pulled out of uh, one of the laptops that we have in class. And the way lithium ion batteries essentially work is they work through the flow of lithium ions, thus the term lithium ion battery. The way the current is produced is lithium ions physically transport from the anode to the cathode during the electrochemistry. So taking a look at this, um, at this schematic, so what we have on one side of the casing of the battery is a sheet of lithium, okay? So that's elemental lithium. And as the battery discharges, right, we get lithium uh, ions to get produced, and those are represented by these little gray spheres here. And the lithium ions will physically transport over to the other side where we have the cathode. And the cathode here, these little shelves here, these little shelves are made up of some kind of transition metal oxide. I think the most common example here might be manganese oxide. And then when the lithium ion arrives over here, it's going to do a reduction there of the manganese to make a lithium manganese oxide complex. So lithium ions going from left to right in my schematic here will be discharging, will produce the voltage. And um, this lithium ion battery, I'm not seeing the voltage written on it very clearly but they tend to be about 3.6 volts. Okay, if you crack open the lithium ion battery that might be in your cell phone, I've got an iPhone here so I can't get at the battery very easily, but if you have a phone where you can take off the back, you can look at the battery casing and it'll probably say something like 3.6 or 3.7 volts. Now the thing we know about lithium ion batteries is that they're rechargeable, so this chemistry can go the other way. So when we plug our battery back in to get recharged, what happens is the lithium ions physically transport back over to the other side of the battery casing. And the two sides are connected with a, um, a conductive polymer material. That's why these things are, are very kind of dry. There isn't um, any sort of acid solution or anything like that to them. They're, they're very dry um, batteries. They're sort of the ultimate, in a way, dry cell battery. All right, and because of their ease of being recharged, they make great consumer electronic batteries. They provide a lot of voltage, right? 3.6 volts, that's a pretty good um, 
packed for such a relatively small uh, package. So that's lithium ion batteries. Let's get that guy out of our way now. And the last battery I'm going to show you is a fuel cell battery. And fuel cells may kind of be the wave of the future um, because, as you can see here from the electrochemistry, it's pretty darn clean, right? The byproduct of a fuel cell battery is water vapor. That can't get any more environmentally friendly when you think about it. So what's the fundamental chemistry behind it? Well, it's the oxidation of hydrogen and the reduction of oxygen, hydrogen and oxygen. Pretty straightforward, and it produces a decent voltage of about 1.23 volts. And the way this is typically engineered is you have circulating through one side of the battery hydrogen gas and through the other side of the battery oxygen gas. Other than the environmental reasons, one of the really attractive things about fuel cell batteries is that one of your reagents is as inexpensive as it can get. It's oxygen gas. So you really just kind of open the battery up somehow to allow oxygen to filter through. Now I have a, little, um, a version of a fuel cell battery. The chemistry that this battery operates on is slightly different than the chemistry I'm showing you here. But what you can see on the bottom of this battery is I've got this grating, okay? And this is where the oxygen will actually seep through in this uh, battery casing setup that I have. So we would put a solution in the bottom of this battery, and inside that solution would be our hydrogen. You put something like sodium borohydride, which is essentially um, a, a source of hydrogen. It's not pure hydrogen gas, but it's a source of hydrogen. So you would put that solution down in there, and then because this has an open grating on it, that allows the oxygen to filter into it um, and, and set up the, uh, the uh, redox chemistry. So fuel cell batteries have some promise. They also have limitations, right? The best version of a fuel cell battery does actually work with hydrogen gas, all right? And so transporting hydrogen gas is actually a little bit of an issue. It's not a, a necessarily a safety issue because we transport octane fuel all over the country, right? And that's a, got a lot of bang for its buck, so to speak. Um, but our infrastructure isn't really set up right now to be based on hydrogen. So I don't know if we'll be driving around in fuel cell cars anytime soon. As you know, we, we do have um, cars that are based on lithium ion batteries. But I don't know if we're going to be driving around in fuel cell cars anytime soon. It might be great for the environment because of the chemistry that, uh, that we have here in a uh, fuel cell battery. But the problem is going to be um, building an infrastructure based on hydrogen. I think that's going to be a long ways off. So while I think I will probably drive around in a car that works off of lithium ion batteries, and I suspect you will too, not quite sure we're going to be driving around in fuel cell based cars anytime soon. All right, so the video has gotten a little long. I want to let you know that the details of all of these batteries um, can also be found on our website, um, the slides with more of the details, so um, you can have that as a backup. But that's just a quick survey of four of the most common types of batteries that are going to be out there. Okay. Uh, next time we're going to look, I think, at uh, corrosion and kind of talk about electrochemistry, the bad. Batteries are electrochemistry, the good. Corrosion is electrochemistry, the bad. We'll talk about that next time.